Hey guys, this is Bastion from Capcom Unity. Uh, this is my Kurapeko walkthrough video. I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step guide on you know what exactly to do to kill it. I'm just going to show you how I kill it, the way I handle it. Uh, I'm going to show you a few tips here or there for beginners because I'm you know I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of you, and hopefully this will help some of you guys out. Now as I enter here, you'll see that there are a few jaggy in the middle of the area. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about those. One of the great additions in Try is that um, prey, like monsters or minions, prey is what we used to call the small velociraptor looking uh, creatures in the previous Monster Hunter games. They really don't bother you when there's a big monster in the area. They'll actually, you know, they're actually aware of the fight that's going on. They don't want to get hurt, so they'll usually just stay in the background. Sometimes they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get brave and uh, actually attack you, but for the most part, they'll actually just stand in the background and watch you fight, so you don't have to worry about killing them. Don't waste your time. Just, you know, just go right to the boss fight. As you can see, I'm Link's just on my map. In the demo, it doesn't matter because you always have the map for, you know, demo purposes. But normally, if a Link stole an item from you and you want it back, you could either kill them, or if they manage to get away, you go to the zone uh, and most areas have a zone where you can search for items that you may have lost. It, it, it always has... It, lo it looks like a bunch of barrels stacked and you know, just a bunch of random items. It's usually felines around and that's how you get your items back if you search there. Here you can see Kurapeko uh, puffing up its chest and roaring. Um, in this case, it's calling a monster. The type of roar it does is very indicative of what monster it'll call. In this case, it sounds like a Rathian, so if, it's, if it does the roar, it's going to call a Rathian. Uh, you can stop this by hitting its chest, doing enough damage to the chest. Unfortunately, I don't do that this time, so it calls the Rathian. And for the purposes of this video, I'm actually going to run away. I want to fight the Rathian right now. This can easily be done by jumping off the side of the cliff. You can see on the mini-map where you're able to do that. I actually get confused for a second and miss, so I have to turn around and I almost get hit, but I do eventually make it out, as you can see. And now, because I have to wait for them to separate to continue the fight, I'll talk more about Kurapeko's roars. Um, in this case, it called a monster. It has other roars where it can heal itself or increase its attack power, and yeah, if you do manage to interrupt those, Instead of just stopping the effect, it'll actually give you whatever effect it was going to do for itself. So if it was going to heal itself, it would have not only healed itself, but other monsters in the area. This includes, you know, Rathian, Jaggies, you know, whatever. Um, obviously, you don't want that to happen. So if you interrupted that, it would have healed you. You know, same thing for the attack power buff. So it's always, you should always make it a priority to uh, interrupt its, its, its roars. They're never good. You always want to try and do that. Now here's something actually that a lot of people that I know uh, actually don't know about is um, you might have seen that the barbecue spit is a double spit. People often wonder, oh, you know, it's a double spit. How do I cook two meats? You cook two meats by holding the run button. In this case, I'm playing on a classic controller, so that would be R. I'm playing on the PSP mode classic controller, so it's R. Just hold hold run the entire time you're cooking, and as the first steak finishes, you'll automatically put the second stick on. Just keep holding R. Um, as you start cooking two steaks at once, they cook much faster, as you can see, roughly, you know, two times faster. Um, obviously, you have, you have to pay more attention, but it's very easy. Right after the song stops, you, you can pretty much just pick them off right there. Uh, it's very easy to, to figure out how to do that. Um, if you wait too long, you'll burn the meat, which isn't good. If you do it too early, it'll be rare, which, again, isn't good. It's always best to do it at the perfect time. Now, you might notice that as I'm attacking Kurapeko, I don't really attack... Um, for very long. I do a, a few quick attacks and then I, I usually dodge out of the way. Uh, this is something you should do for all monsters really, unless it's trapped or paralyzed or you know there's something that's stopping it from moving or attacking. You should never um, just endlessly attack. That's that's the biggest mistake that new players make to this game. They just want to hack and slash. You can't do that. 
That's what I call um, getting greedy with your attack. You know, you get you get greedy. You want to keep attacking. Uh, that's, that's not the best thing to do because you know monsters will often <laughs> try and attack you. Um, the best thing to do is just you know like like I do, just attack a few times, dodge out of the way. Um, even if even if they're not going to attack or if their attack would have missed you, it's always good to do it. Just, you know, just in case it was going to hit you, it's always good to do it to um, you know reposition yourself, find a better opening, and attack from there. And uh, as, as you can see, I get I get attacked a few times in this, but you know for the most part, I, I really don't get hit, and you know th that's all because I don't get greedy with my attacks. I just attack a few times, and that's it. Here you can see Kurobekko giving away its next attack. It'll slam together the, to its wings, making a tiny spark. And then after that, it'll jump at you two to three times, slamming together its wings, this time making an explosion. I call this attack Flint Spark. It's very easy to dodge. You just, as you see me do here, you just kind of go in a circle. It can't really uh, track you very well. It'll just look at you and then jump in that direction. It won't be able to turn midair or anything. Uh, if you're far away, it can actually jump pretty far. Um, if you're the correct distance, you know, you don't want to be too far, but if you're the right distance, you can actually just roll towards Kurapeko as it's doing the jump, and you should just roll right under it, it'll go over you, completely missing you. Uh, in most cases, it can't turn 180 degrees, so you'll be fine for the next attack as well, so that's another good way to get through this. Now, limping is a very clear indication that the monster is weak, they're low on health. Um, when they limp, it means that they're trying to leave the zone, trying to get to the zone where their lair is. Uh, lair is, is where they'll sleep, um, try and recover. It generally, you know, looks like a monster's lair, there's bones around, sometimes there's, egg, there's eggs. Some monsters, just because of the way they move, they don't limp very often. A great example of this in the previous games with Diablo, so you didn't really limp. Um, the only way to tell for monsters like this is They'll start moving slower, they'll start attacking slower, and again, this is a, a, a more subtle way of telling if a monster is weak, but you know, it's still a sign nonetheless. Alright guys, that'll conclude my Kurapeko walkthrough video. I hope you liked it, I hope it helps some of you new players out, and I hope to see all of you online uh, April 20th when this game releases.